name is Keith Kennedy. I'm Nikki Davies. I'm Jamie Maxwell. I'm Heidi Kroll. I'm Megan Ferguson. And I'm Haley Morrison. And we're Groove Innovations, and we're here today to talk about, to talk about uh, your uh, Grow With Us campaign. statement of achievement, we would like to establish the Friends of the Insect Zoo um, as a support organization for the K-State Insect Zoo. Um, to achieve this, we came up with the campaign Grow With Us. It has di different meanings and levels to that one phrase. Um, it starts with relating to the growth campaign, which is the campaign for uh, raising money for the second level to the Insect Zoo. Um, so it's part of the growth of the Insect Zoo. It relates to the growing of the Friends of the Insect Zoo organization itself. It also relates to uh, the families and making the vision and the uh, education of, to grow of the organization through uh, the different publics that we've chosen. Uh, this is the logo that we came up with. We came up with um, the same idea that you, you guys wanted to keep of uh, the stone in the background, the Insect Zoo and the K-State Gardens in the background. We have uh, two little kids running with butterflies and uh, they grow with us. We did a SWOT analysis, um, strength, weakness, and opportunity, and threat. We thought the strength of the organization was that it's unique. Uh, a weakness is the lack of identity, but that presents uh, an opportunity for growth potential of the Friends of the Insects here. Um, a threat would be other local organizations with same campaigns, so um, things like the Sunset Zoo and Beach Art Museum. Uh, one of our objectives is to increase Membership to the Friends of the Insect Zoo at the various uh, giving levels. Uh, the benefactors are increasing to 30, um, increasing the support and sponsors by 50, uh, individuals and families by 60 over a span of two years of the capital campaign. And through this, we calculated about, uh, we averaged at the minimum level of each of those categories. So at the benefactor level, it's a minimum of 1,000 or more. And so if we did the averages, we raised about $70,000 through just memberships alone, but that's doing that's a very conservative estimate based on the fact that someone can donate $2,000, $5,000, and that kind of level. So hopefully through uh, these conservative estimates, we can actually reach uh, over $100,000. And then through $200,000 through grant funding, so we did find one that does this exact type of thing. They look for nonprofit organizations that are looking to uh, build or uh, renovate certain facilities uh, for this type of purpose. And it's called the Sunderland Foundation, and we have uh, in our campaign booklet different ways to go about applying for those kinds of grants. Uh, who are we targeting? Uh, we have three different uh, publics. That would be the um, community, philanthropists, local businesses around the community, and um, K-State alumni and local families. Uh, community philanthropists, there's tons of different uh, things, especially around the university, to donate to. And so that's one of our key publics is trying to grab those community supporters. Um, through this unique uh, organization, it's a, 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 an environmental organization, it's also a uh, educational organization, so it kind of has a unique tie for people to want to contribute to. Um, local businesses is another one because it's supporting local uh, education, environmental uh, type of uh, organization and also allows for businesses to get their name out there and show that they're supporting a, a local community effort. And then our KSU alumni and um, Manhattan uh, residents, local community families and uh, people like that, um, because it's a unique and memorable experience of educational and uh, once people come and see it, they can become a supporter of it and it's also just because they have this local tie to the organization. Um, how will we target them? These will be our uh, tactics and media tools. Uh, well, we have a brochure that we're going to hand out so you, so you can kind of see uh, one of the copies of it. This brochure is just for the Friends of the Insect Zoo. It's a way to uh, show people that there is an organization to support the Insect Zoo. It also uh, allows uh, the information about how to give and the various giving levels and the mission of the organization. That way it's a uh, hands-on thing people can see of like, okay, this is how I can uh, contribute to the Friends of the Insect Zoo. Um, our next tactic for media is social media. Through our research, it is extremely crucial to have an online presence. And we feel the best way to do this is through a Facebook page. 
and it makes me why a Facebook page for Friends of the Insects organization. But uh, our research shows that, especially if you type in Friends of the Insect Zoo or Insect Zoo Manhattan, Kansas, the Facebook page for it pops up first on a Google search. And so if you have that, people can click on that first and then get to your website uh, through the, that uh, avenue. And the next thing would be press releases. We came up with a couple of those in our campaign book and uh, we looked through that. Um, it would just be press releases about uh, the growth campaign that you're launching, a capital campaign, uh, different events, um, one of the events that we have is for an advertisement that we have. The, um, let's see what's the oh, first. Okay, this is our newsletter. Actually, we came up with a template for a newsletter that you can send out um, electronically or um, through mail. But we figured with electronic, it's cheaper. You can send it out monthly. Um, we have a template, so we made it up for you. You can just put whatever information you want, what's going on that month. Um, and then the next one is, is the advertisement of what I was talking about is um, one of the events that we came up with was um, the kickoff of the campaign would be um, the uh, Friends of the Insect Zoo kickoff event. Um, come see uh, Pat Bosco and President Schultz eat a bug. Did you already find them? <laughs> We've actually spoken with them and they have expressed interest in it. So um, it would be something that you could definitely pursue. Uh, we, we thought of these events because it's uh, a nice way, to, it's a unique uh, type of event, people will kind of gain some interest because the organization of the Insect Zoo is a unique thing, so you might as well have a unique event to kick off the campaign for it. Um, but it would start off with um, uh, people would donate uh, their money to see, or to President Scholes or to uh, Dean Bosco to see uh, who they want to eat the bug. So whoever raised the most money would end up eating the bug or some type of insect related food item. Um, this would take off in the spring to kick off the event. Um, we also have a fall bug banquet. So with our press releases of targeting local businesses, we can uh, hopefully get donations for the silent auction, which will help raise money for the insect zoo and also uh, get community members to you know, recognize their local businesses supporting them. We also have Friends of Insect Zoo brochures, which we just handed out, attached with a ticket. The, in our calendar, we said that this would probably happen in early spring and expire in April, since this is kind of a slower season for the insect zoo. To get people in, uh, just to see it, and their parents, since it's going through the schools, uh, their parents will see the brochure and be like, oh, this is kind of an interesting thing, or why, why is this handing out? We got this free ticket, let's go to the insect zoo, and it could be something that we could support. Um, this is a little bit of a rundown of our budget. Um, originally, we had started with $4,000, is what we were given. Um, through these um, media expenses, the newspaper, brochures, um, flyers, we um, actually came up with through Vistaprint, and that is something that supports small organizations such as the Friends of the Insect Zoo and um, uses cheaper prices and delivers right to your door um, of whatever kind of brochures, flyers, whatever, say the dates, um, anything you want. So that's how we came up with all those prices and um, radio advertisements and then uh, event food for the um, fall silent um, auction thing with that um, Keith was talking about, but that was going to be around $2,000. Um, however, um, the tickets for the auction for the for the banquet would be we're expecting about 200 people for um, $20 each, and that's going to be around $4,000. Um, and $20 or 20 donated items for the auction, which is a really low ball estimate. That would be 20 items from local businesses around the city, um, around $50 each, and that's gonna be around $1,000. Um, the possible grants that we had discussed is gonna be around $200,000, and then the membership, $100,000. So we come up about $305,000 um, over the span of two years. You know, another uh, thing with keeping the cost low is if having a Facebook page, you can connect to people on a regular basis at, at no cost to the organization. Um, with Facebook, you can update, it's basically sending out instant newsletters with updating that page. And so people, if they're friending the page, you can connect to the alumni, you can collect to community supporters, and it's all free. And so that cuts down on the cost a lot. Another thing with the Vista print is a really inexpensive way for small organizations to get this kind of stuff out there. But also the K-State Marketing, uh, Communications and Marketing Department does this stuff. They want to, uh, 
have all that information coming out from one place. And so that's another avenue where you can get this information out to these different publics. That's uh, all of our presentation. Thank you for your time. Do you uh, have any questions for us?